Hey folks, Matt from ArtOfTheImage.com. The Sony A9, continuing on with our look at it, uh, that brand new, very impressive looking camera from Sony. Uh, but as CNET has pointed out, is it all roses or is it all positives? CNET has five drawbacks of the A9. Uh, and I was reading an article from them. The article is... Um, is over on CNET. It's uh, called, uh, what's the name of this article? Sony A9, A9 could trounce Canon and Nikon at their own game. So they list some of the positives, uh, but then they go into uh, the drawbacks. And they're interesting. I'm curious to see what you guys think. There's five of them. Number one is the price. And at first glance, the A9 is less expensive than a comparable Nikon D5 or Canon 1DX Mark II. However, CNET points out, uh, it costs a lot less than its DSLR buddies, at least until you start loading it up with the grips and batteries to bring it up to par. So that's probably a valid um, criticism because it is a gripless camera, whereas the, the D5 from Nikon, the Canon 1DX Mark II, uh, is the larger integrated grip. In other words, the body has the, the, the um, vertical grip built in, whereas you have to add that to the A9. And then again, you also have a much stronger batteries in the D5 and the 1DX Mark II. So um, they are correct in the sense that if you want on-par battery life, you're going to, well, first of all, you can't get on-par battery life, but if you want to keep up to, say, one battery in either the Nikon D5 or the Canon 1DX Mark II, you're going to have to have a bunch of extras. So by the time you add the grip and the batteries, the prices are pretty much on par, which I think is a fair criticism, but I'm curious to see what you guys think. Let me know in the comments below. That's number one. Let me know what you think about that uh, drawback. Number two is the battery life. Um, and we know that a lot of the Sony's um, battery life has been awful. That's been one of the main complaints about the Sony's is they have very short battery life in comparison to traditional DSLRs. And in fact, in comparison to uh, even mirrorless cameras like the Panasonic's. Most of the Panasonic's like this G85 I'm filming with right now, very, very good battery life in comparison to the Sony's. The... Um, some of the points they make here is at 20 frames per second, um, how many shots are you going to get? And they say even if you get the battery grip, which holds two batteries, and in theory brings your viewfinder shooting duration to a more reasonable 1,440 shots uh, from the total 480, I guess is what they're claiming, without the viewfinder 650. That's still not really comparable to what you're going to get out of a D5 or a Canon 1DX Mark II. So drawback... Uh, do you care? Is it? Are you so used to Sony now, and and you're willing to live with, or the other advantages outweigh that you're willing to live with a low battery life? That that's not a big deal for you anymore, or is that still a significant concern? Okay, that's number two. So let me know what you think on that one on the battery life. Number three, the build quality. They say Canon and Nikon's bodies are built like tanks with dust and weather sealing has been honed over time. The A9 has built and weather sealing that's a little better than the A7 7 series. Good, but hardly in the same league. Now, this is this is an interesting consideration. I haven't held the A9, and I'm I'm not sure if this is more just this writer's opinion, or if this is a truly valid criticism that the A9 is not up to snuff and comparable to for build quality to the Nikon D5 and the Canon 1DX Mark II. Again, let me know what you guys think. Do you think that this is not a valid criticism or do you think, yeah, it's true, the D5 and the, the Canon 1DX Mark II are built a little better than the A9? And if so, even if that is the case, is it enough of a difference to be of importance to you? Especially if you're a sports shooter, wildlife shooter, where you might be in situations where, uh, you know, high dust and rain and environmental considerations. Let me know. That's number three. Uh, number four is storage. Dual card slots, but only one of them supports UHS-2 uh, SD. So they're basically saying that they don't feel that the Sony keeps up as far as being able to write um, fast enough with the card slots. Uh, for me, this isn't a consideration, really. It would have been nice, I guess, if they both did support UHS-2. But I like that it's a pair of SDXCs. But what do you guys think? 
do, is this a is this a valid concern? Is this is this a purchasing concern for you? Is this does this rule out the camera? Is it minor? Are you okay with it? Do you wish it should have been something else? Let me know. That's point number four on the storage. And then number five that CNET has here, lenses. Uh, as this is can't, uh, Sony's first array into, into pro e-mount territory. It doesn't have nearly as many super fast telephoto um, or really, for that matter, um, the lens catalog that either Canon or Nikon has. Now, this is where it hits home for me because as you know, I've always said that this, this to me is one of the reasons I haven't got heavily into Sony is I, I don't feel they have uh, enough of a lens offering or enough quality budget lenses. And that's where I, you know, I've said in the past that you, you can get very nice kit lenses, um, F, F1.8 primes instead of F1.4 offerings from Canon and Nikon, which are very, very good performing at a very good price. And I just don't feel you have those same budget priced high performance lenses in the Sony lens lineup. So do you think this is a valid concern as I do, or do you disagree? Do you think that's not a concern? So that's five points, five drawbacks that CNET has pointed out here. And I'm just curious to get your feedback, your pulse on this. Are these are these drawbacks, uh, first off, do you think they're valid? Second off, uh, se secondly, <laughs> do you think that they would uh, stop you from purchasing it? Are they stopping you from purchasing it? Is there one that's more significant than another one? Let me know in the comments below. Let's discuss these, these five points. I'm just curious to see what you folks think about this. Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for participating. Always interested to hear what you guys have to say. I'd like to get a, a pulse on the on the viewers and shooters out there to know what you guys are thinking about these. I always know when I look at it what my initial thoughts are, but I want to know what you guys think. Thanks for tuning in. Stay tuned. We'll be back soon here at ArtOfTheImage.com.